coming along and for all of the groups uh, who are involved in this evening's rally. Uh, seeing the establishment of an elected women's committee is a really exciting development in party democracy. Uh, it's so important that we elect a committee who are committed to represent women out in the CLPs, out campaigning, involved in the issues that are affecting women at the moment. Uh, my name is Ruth Hayes. I'm the chair of Labour Women Leading, uh, which brings together women on the left within the Labour Party to campaign for feminist politics. Uh, we've got such a fantastic panel for you this evening. Um, I'm really looking forward to listening to them. Um, I'm sorry to have to announce that Apsana Begum is unable to be with us this evening, uh, but she sends her apologies and she wishes everyone a very successful event. Uh, we'll be hearing from a number of speakers, um, including six uh, socialist women who are standing for the new Women's Committee. The elections will take place during Women's Conference in June. Uh, so it, it won't be like an NEC election, it will be for the women who are delegates. If your CLP hasn't already nominated, um, it's still possible to nominate your CLP or your Women's Branch would need to get those nominations in by the 26th of May. Uh, and can, you can also submit motions for women's conference. Um, so do find out, if you're not sure, put something in the uh, chat, we will try and find out and get back to you. Uh, our candidates so far have got off to a great start with a large number of nominations, which is brilliant, but obviously we want to make sure that we not only get people elected, but that we have a thriving women's committee that's genuinely connected uh, to women within the party. Um, Dawn Butler will be speaking to us, but she's speaking this evening in response to the Queen's speech. Uh, so we can't quite predict uh, when she will be able to join us and we'll take her uh, when she arrives. Um, so without further ado, I'll hand over to our first speaker tonight, uh, Gemma Bolton. Gemma, as many of you will know, is a representative on the Labour Party's NEC and a co-chair of the Campaign for Labour Party Democracy. So we're delighted to have you with us, Gemma, and over to you. Hi, thanks so much for inviting me to speak today alongside so many amazing socialist sisters as we campaign to elect uh, the, um, the our candidates for the first uh, ever National Women's Committee of the Labour Party. And I'm so pleased and proud that my constituency last week voted to nominate all six of our candidates for National Women's Committee, as well as to send Mandy's very good uh, poverty emergency motion to Women's Conference. And these elections are really important because it offers us the ability to make the case to women members about promoting the sort of future for women that we as socialists want to create of equality of rights and freedom without poverty, discrimination and violence against women. And this upcoming women's conference where we will hopefully elect these brilliant candidates is the opportunity for us to promote and ensure that the Labour Party has a socialist and feminist agenda. So we've got to pass great socialist feminist motions in our women's branches and our CLPs. We've got to get them to conference floor. Labour's feminism cannot only be projects such as 50-50 Parliament or Ask Her to Stand, which are great, noble projects, but we must have a resoundingly socialist, feminist agenda, and we must discuss and fight on women's issues as a mainstream topic. You know, Labour has to be a hub in which we can discuss and fight for feminist causes, from issues of low pay for women and the gender pay gap to period poverty, as well as how we can fight against harassment and discrimination inside the, and outside of the party. Um, and the Labour Party must be speaking out on these issues as they can inspire and enthuse people to our movement and to our message. Look at, you know, for example, uh, repeal the eighth in Ireland and how it galvanised a lot of women and brought the fight for bodily autonomy to the front and centre. Events, discussion and engagement around issues such as this and also watershed moments such as you know, the Me Too movement, which showed how the ingrained sexism and sexual harassment and abuse in our society is essential in engaging and inspiring women, especially young women, to feminism and feminist mm -hmm. activism. And you know, they're key modern feminist issues. And I know that our socialist candidates for the National Women's Committee will speak out for women and the causes that we need both to 
like we need most and to bring our knowledge and bring their knowledge sorry and years of activism on women's issues inside and outside of the party to the role and their knowledge of a broad range of areas from all walks of life whether that's safe housing anti-racism youth activism the poverty emergency and so much more so please nominate these candidates who we're hearing from tonight let's elect socialist delegates to our women's conference and let's get socialists elected and socialist policies and motions passed so thank you so much for having me along tonight and solidarity Apologies, I knew that would happen. I muted myself to make sure there was no background noise and then there was a delay. Thank you so much, Gemma. That was a great start to this evening. And I think uh, a really important overview of the issues that women are campaigning on at the moment. Uh, fantastic. We will move um, straight to uh, the first of our candidate speakers. So just a reminder, the six candidates uh, standing um, who are speaking to us tonight. And the first is Pamela Fitzpatrick, who's a well-known community activist, trade unionist and Corbyn supporter, who stood as Labour's uh, prospective parliamentary candidate for the marginal seat of Harrow East in the 2019 general election. Uh, Pamela draws attention to the impact on women from COVID including the increase in domestic abuse. Uh, and uh, I know Pamela's also an active trade unionist uh, and involved in a range of campaigns. So um, over to you, Pamela. Oh, and you're muted at the moment, that's it, lovely. Thank you, Ruth, and thank you, Gemma. Yes, um, my name's Pamela. I've been a Harrow councillor as well as the other things that Ruth mentioned since 2014, but that doesn't necessarily rule me out as being a socialist woman. Um, my day job is working in the voluntary sector and I've worked in the voluntary sector for about 25 years. And my work throughout that time has largely involved representing women who are in poverty. And in particular, I've had a focus on migrant women. And through my work, I see on a daily basis, the impact of government and local authority policies on women. And it's now more than a decade since the Tories came to power and introduced horrendous measures of austerity. And some of you, you'll have heard of many of them, universal credit, but it's much more than that. Things like limiting benefits to two children, abolishing the social fund, changing the system of council tax to support to a localised scheme so that it's a kind of lottery, postcode lottery as to how much benefit that you get. But not only did they cut benefits at that time in 2013, they made savage cuts to legal aid. And the areas of legal aid that they cut most were the areas of law that women rely on. In particular, legal aid for welfare benefits and for family law was largely abolished. So you have the awful situation of women being refused, denied benefits, particularly migrant women, where benefit officials often get confused about immigration rules or residence conditions, but the women can't get access to legal advice to challenge those decisions. And we also see the horrendous situation of women who faced abuse have to stand in court facing their abuser unrepresented. So poverty, it's been highlighted, the level of poverty and inequality by COVID. It's been absolutely horrendous. And if we think about kind of poverty, but also at the other end of the scale, the vast wealth of some, and Oxfam reported last year that if the world's two rich, richest men sat on their wealth, piled up in $100 bills, they would be sat in outer space, whilst the vast majority would be sitting on the floor. And that's the society that we now live in. Now, the Labour manifestos of 2017 and 2019 offered a chance to tackle some of those issues. But at a time of crisis, when COVID has highlighted, we need those policies more than ever, what we have is a retreat. We have very little opposition. We're re returning to Tory-like policies, which are not going to benefit women. So at the moment, I know that everybody feels in despair 
at what's going on, particularly after the last elections. You know, and even the weather is, uh, it's turning out to uh, in misery with us all. But what I feel is that this is, can't be further from the truth because what we're seeing is not the death of socialism, we're seeing the death of establishment politics. And whilst that old world of establishment politics is dying, the new world is trying to be born. Now we see that in the millions of people who are waking up and challenging and beginning to take to the streets. We saw it in the demonstrations by women for Sarah Everard and others who are victims of domestic violence. We've seen it through the demonstrations of Black Lives Matters and the uprisings that are happening within workplaces. So we need within the Labour Party to build a leadership that is going to address the concerns of working class women. And we can do that at every level, whether it's in the CLPs, in women's branches, but also within this new exciting women's committee. So we have to get socialist women elected to the women's committee. And it has to be more than just paper statements. We have to actually believe and carry out the policies that are going to benefit women in the future. And that is a reversal of the cuts to legal aid. It's a reversal of all the cuts to social security. If we hadn't had the cuts to social security, we would not have the housing crisis that we have now. So it's very simple. All you need to do is elect us six candidates and hopefully we will be able to make a change for women. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed, Pamela. That was brilliant, uh, really inspiring. And I think we can see the ways in which uh, lot, there have been lots of attacks on our communities, but women have often borne the brunt of those very specifically. Uh, and your contribution has really highlighted what we need to do to tackle that. Um, I'd like to just give a shout out really to the people who are joining us this evening. We've got people from Timeworth, Brighton, London, Shipley and Accrington, quite a range. Do keep putting that in the Q&A. Uh, and we've got a special welcome this evening to the former NEC chair, Andy Fox from Doncaster, who's uh, joining us with her granddaughter, Amber, who's a young Labour member. Uh, so it's fantastic to have different generations of women um, here uh, and sharing their experiences uh, and taking part in the campaign. Thank you very much. And um, next um, on uh, our speaker panel is Mandy Clare. Now Mandy's actually recovering from a minor procedure at the moment. And so she's had to record her contribution. But Mandy's a Cheshire councillor who champions the cause of low income women and has pushed the poverty emergency initiative through her local council. She's also a champion for party democracy, the right of CLPs to have political debate and uh, opposing unfair suspensions. So I'm hoping that our technical um, team will be able to uh, play us Mandy's. Hi, I'm Mandy Clare, a local councillor from Cheshire and proud to be standing as part of the Grassroots Labour Women team alongside Akua, Trisha, Chloe and Pamela. For me, I have four kids. I started out in life as a teenage mum and over the years I've managed projects related to social justice, women and families. So focusing on things like family support, domestic abuse, pregnancy and early parenting. I represent a low income ward and for a number of years I've also campaigned for better working class representation um, within the party and within politics generally. As a councillor I've set in motion something called the poverty emergency to sit alongside the climate emergency. So the poverty emergency is a declaration that holds councils to higher standards and commitments in setting the tone for a more socially just recovery from the pandemic. Eight other councils have now joined us in making this declaration, but we need more, so please look it up online. There will be a motion going to Women's Conference on this, and I'm determined that we should make our approach to the issue of poverty 
about more than just food um, and our approach to recovery about much more than business as usual or charity. So please consider the Poverty Emergency Motion within your CLP for Women's Conference and get in touch with me if you'd like to know more about this. I have been a convener for um, the North West Labour Party Democracy um, Network over the last few years, having set up a network to support Corbyn during that difficult period through building greater awareness and mutual support with regards to party democracy um, and how that works. More recently, I've established an online platform called the Working Class Activist Network, which features my new show, which is called Praxis TV. These are a series of interviews with working class people about how class shapes our opportunities and lives. There is a recently recorded interview on there with our team member Pamela Fitzpatrick, which is well worth checking out if you have time. There will be motions making their way out through our support organisations on the theme of women, poverty and class, which you may also be interested in supporting. These motions will struggle to get as much support behind them as other popular issues do. Um, but because of the underrepresentation problem, I see it as our responsibility to really push this issue to the forefront on behalf of the many women who currently lack political power and voice and who no longer feel the party is a natural or supportive political home for them. I'm standing for the Women's Committee because I want to work for a democratic Labour women's organisation at all levels and push on behalf of all women party members for the Women's Committee and for the Women's Conference to be the forces for socialist change that we all want them to be. So um, democratic representation to me means that our party at all levels needs to reflect the experiences and the needs of all within society and to make additional efforts where necessary to reach out further to ensure inclusion and representation of those with the weakest connections to power and influence. So if elected, we will work closely together and with women to shape these new women's structures in a way that overcomes these traditional barriers. Our plan is to support women's offices, women's forums and the establishment of more women's branches. We want to ensure the availability of excellent training and political education for women so that together we can drive forward the campaigns that are important to us and we will work hard to ensure democratic and inclusive regional and national women's conferences and more besides by being accessible and accountable to you as your representatives. So we have a great team, however difficult things are for left women at currently and we know that things are really difficult and this is our party and it's important that we put the familiarity that we've gained over the past few years with regards to the democratic structures how they work and how vital they are to good use and that we don't give up women are strong and socialist women are the strongest of all so I hope that everybody has a really great event and I'd like to thank Arise for hosting the Grassroots Labour Women team and Solma and um, also to thank Comrades for speaking up in support of us and um, wish everybody a great women's conference and hope to see you there. Solidarity. Great. Thank you. Um, obviously, it's a shame Mandy can't be with us in person, but I think you'll agree her video gets across uh, a whole range of issues uh, and that really strong commitment uh, to involve women from a wide range of backgrounds, including uh, an emphasis on working class women. Um, we've had I've had a message to say we've now got uh, a people with us from a massive range of places, uh, Aberconwy, Fenland, Manchester, Sheffield and Harlow. It is great to hear from people. I know it's not the same as having a real life uh, meeting where we could have a chat over coffee or whatever, but it is lovely to hear from people. Um, and just as I was about to say it, um, the Socialist Campaign Group um, are backing uh, the six candidates uh, for the Women's Committee election and I'm really delighted to have with us this evening Beth Winter um, and uh, she will be our next speaker. Beth's uh, a Member of Parliament in South Wales where she was born uh, and lives with her family. Before entering Parliament Beth spent many years working in the field of housing and homelessness uh, as a community worker and then a researcher 
specialising in poverty and social exclusion, uh, for which she was awarded a PhD from Swansea University. Uh, Beth joined the Labour Party when Jeremy Corbyn became the leader uh, and is now a member of the Socialist Campaign Group in Parliament. Beth, thank you very much. I know how busy everyone is at the moment. Thank you very much for joining us and over to you. Oh, dear well, Ruth. Thank you very much, Ruth. And, and thank you for the kind invite to speak this evening. It really is a, a pleasure. And I am particularly pleased to be able to support the slate as proposed by Welsh Labour Grassroots for the CLP seats on the Labour Women's Committee. And having listened to some of the candidates, um, I just know that, that if and when elected, you know, you will be brilliant. Now, in Wales, we've just had our Senate's Welsh Parliament elections and women are well represented in our Senedd and in positions of influence. Two thirds of the new cabinet in Wales are women. Uh, while the number of women Senedd members has dropped slightly, 26 women to 34 men, it's interesting to note the party differences. 57% of Labour MSs are women and only 19% of Conservatives. Now that's politics for you. This position regarding women in the Labour Party in Wales is thanks to measures fought for by women, like all women's shortlists. But during the over 20 years of its existence, not one MS has been a woman of colour until now, when the first woman of colour, Natasha Ashgar, was elected. We know too that disabled women and other minority groups are underrepresented in public life. Diversity remains an issue to be tackled, and it's good to see how diverse a group is supporting for the Women's Committee. It's interesting also to note that almost three quarters of all interventions in the last Senate, the Welsh Parliament, referring to issues such as childcare, domestic abuse and equal pay were made by women. We need women in political institutions to make sure our needs are addressed and our voices are heard. And women really can and do make a difference. In my own constituency of Cunham Valley in South Wales, women have taken the initiative of sending a message of support and solidarity in the last few days to the women of Palestine and their families who are suffering so much. Um, and in the speech that I made on Saturday in Cardiff at the Free Palestine Rally, I referred to the way they've suffered so much over the years, imagining myself as a Palestinian woman, not able to get medicines for my children or the COVID vaccine for my family, not being able to farm my land because in it, there's an illegal wall built across it. The daily difficulty of going to and from work, the danger and humiliation of his, Israeli roadblocks, and worst of all, the constant worry about the safety of my children. I can articulate and feel these things as a woman and, and a mother of three children myself. It, it, it's just horrendous. Women in Canaan have also recently sent a message of solidarity and support to the local Gypsy, Roma and Traveller communities, particularly referring to the police crime and sentencing bill and how that can adversely affect these communities, a bill I am pleased to say I voted against. While women have made strides forward in creating a more equal and diverse society, as we all know, there's a very long way still to go. Gender pay gap here in Wales, for instance, runs at about 15%. And in poorer areas like mine in Rhonda and Taff, it runs at over 20%. Women are more likely than men to work part-time. And in Wales, 80% of those employed in health and social work activities are women, one of our most undervalued sectors. Our women's organisations can be at the forefront of pressing for recognition of the role women have played in keeping us safe during this pandemic. Of course, Brexit area is worrying too, especially for us in Wales, as we were a net beneficiary of EU funding and now have no guarantee of how much of that funding will continue or seemingly any control over how it will be spent. Several projects relating to women in my own constituency are likely to be affected by the cuts. Sadly, the issue of violence against women and sexual harassment have hit the headlines over recent months again, but violence against women, as we all know, and sexual harassment are not new. 
Domestic abuse and violence sadly remains endemic in this country. The port services have suffered under austerity. In Wales, it's been estimated that an additional £13 million is needed to cover the cost of providing support that's required for survivors and refugees and in the community. And unfortunately, the Domestic Abuse Act falls far short of what's required to, domestic, to tackle domestic violence. Chwar Teg Fair Play, which is a Welsh charity, calls for a fairer Wales where women can achieve and prosper, say, and I quote, until all women are able to live safe, secure and fulfilled lives, we will fail to deliver a fair and equal society. Poverty is a feature of far too many women's lives, depending on food banks, on benefits, low pay, with the prospect of losing the added £20 universal credit in only a few months' time. I'm a co-vice chair of a parliamentary group on universal basic income, and the position of women brings home even more, in my view, the need for UBI. Issues of poverty and deprivation, of the need to put people before profit, of the need to tax wealth and support more vulnerable in our society, all these are even bigger issues when you talk about women. It is essential to adopt an intersectional approach, the interconnection between gender, race, sexuality, class, if we are to truly understand and tackle gender inequality. We've got a network of women's branches and forums. We have women's conferences. These are opportunities for women to discuss issues that matter to them in an environment in which many women feel more comfortable and safe. We also need these bodies to be powerful campaigning women's organisations at a local, regional and national level that effect change, that have a real voice in policy making and that make a difference to women's position in this post-pandemic and post-Brexit world. That's my hope for this newly re-established women's committee, that as women we can truly play an equal part in the solution and create a fairer future for all. Wishing you all the very best. Pobloch, Diolch Fawr. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Beth. Um, and yes, you covered so much in your contribution, but really critical to have an internationalist perspective, and in particular at the moment to understand what's happening in Palestine and to support the rights of Palestinian women. Um, but so much more that you've said, and what a reminder of why we need uh, socialist women in Parliament. Um, and um, it's been really encouraging to see how well uh, the Labour Party did in Wales in the most recent elections, perhaps quite a lot for us to learn elsewhere uh, about the policies that might make that happen. Um, I'm being told we've got a lot of important issues coming up in the Q&A. There probably won't be a chance to um, answer them all here, um, but issues about the rights for WASPy women, women's health and the menopause, Palestine housing. Um, please do, if your CLP hasn't put a motion into women's conference, please do any of those issues are, you know, would be really important. And it's vital that that conference has uh, motions forward that reflect the views of women um, across the CLPs. Uh, we've got people with us this evening from Worthing, uh, Gateshead, Lincoln, Cloyd, France, even. So we're taking that internationalist perspective uh, into our audience as well. Um, we, I'm also informed that Diane Abbott is now with us. He'll be speaking to us later. So Diane, you're very, very welcome. Um, Next, we've got another video, I'm afraid. Our next speaker, Ekua Bayungu, is uh, a spokesperson for the Labour Black Socialist campaign for an actively anti-racist Labour Party. Ekua campaigns in particular on mental health, housing and food poverty. Um, she's recently been elected as a councillor uh, in the May the 6th elections and so has to attend her Labour group AGM tonight. So she's recorded a message for us. Hello everyone, my name is Akua Bayunu. I am sorry I cannot be with you in person today. 
I want to share with you our vision for the new National Women's Committee alongside my fellow candidates and this inspiring panel of amazing socialist women. I am delighted to tell you that as a team, we support the Labour Party Green New Deal, confirming our responsibility for future generations. I am a mother of two and grandmother to five. I raised my children alone on one of the most notorious housing estates in Manchester, working through poverty and discrimination to bring up an amazing woman and an amazing man, both with strong socialist principles, loyalty to their working class roots, proud of their Nigerian, Jamaican and Irish heritage, and able to fight gendered oppression when they meet it. For all our children, labour must invest in renewable energy, challenge the big polluters, and build support for a just transition to a net zero carbon economy. I will be joining the Manchester Green New Deal podcast on the 18th of June, where you will be able to hear more about my commitments both as a member of the Grassroots Labour Women's Team and in my role as a newly elected councillor in Hume. We, the GLW5, also support an ethical foreign policy with peace, conflict resolution and nuclear disarmament at its core. Rather than participating in illegal wars, Labour would support women rising up against oppression across the globe. One of the foundational principles of socialism has to be our commitment to those fighting injustice wherever in the world they are. I commend my sisters out there who continue to commit so much of their time to international campaigns and to the thousands who have poured onto the streets con to condemn the murder of Palestinian women, men and children living in Gaza under bombardment as I record this. In Manchester, there is a fierce campaign emerging for the democratic rights of the people of Hong Kong. And on the 12th of June, I will speak in support of the Stand With, with Hong Kong campaign. Alongside this, we grassroots Labour women stand with the Black Lives Matter global uprising for lasting structural change and against all forms of racism and the attacks on migrant, refugees and asylum seekers and gypsy, roma and traveller communities. We will support inclusive, self-organised equality structures in the party. We will support and defend all women shortlists and their extension to other underrepresented groups. As a member of Labour Black Socialists, I am spokesperson for our campaign for an actively anti-racist Labour Party, where we have asked all socialists within the party to join us in only campaigning for Labour Party candidates at any level who have a proven track record in taking anti-racist action. I am proud that the grassroots Labour women team and Salma Ahmed will fight for Labour to be a force for equality, intersectionality, and by that I mean where the systematic oppression of racism, sexism, misogyny, to name but a few, overlap, and working class unity. And finally, I want to meet you. We have organised a series of Meet the Delegates events starting this Wednesday the 19th of May and continuing through June, where all delegates, and hope to be delegates, are invited to share with us your concerns, ideas and questions about all things Women's Conference, Women's Committee and the new Labour Women's Organisation. Thank you for listening and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Great. Again, uh, it's a shame that we aren't able to have Echo with us, but um, you can hear from her video her passion and commitment to uh, fighting to ensure that racism is fought within the Labour Party and within communities, um, along with a whole range of other issues. Uh, the Green New Deal is clearly a critical issue um, and there are lots of reasons why it's really so important that we elect socialist women onto Women's Committee. Um, 
I've had a message to say that Anna Dyer is here, who is chair of the National Constitutional Committee. Um, and it says here, who does so much behind the scenes to fight for the rights of grassroots members. And I know from my personal experience that Anna is absolutely tireless in trying to explain the Labour Party's procedures and ensure that they're upheld and applied fairly. So it's great to have her with us. Um, and uh, such a, uh, a fantastic range of people supporting uh, this evening's event. Uh, we will now move to our next speaker, uh, who is Chloe Hopkins, who's another of the six candidates who are being introduced this evening. Chloe uh, prioritises decentralising power in the party, as recommended in the Democracy Review, and in supporting CLPs in establishing equalities branches, as well as raising awareness of the disproportionate impact of COVID and climate change on women. So Chloe, thank you very much for joining us and we look forward to hearing from you. Hi, thanks so much, Ruth. And thank you everybody for attending this evening. You know, it's, I feel really grateful that so many of you have given up your evening to come and listen to us. Um, but I'm also really honored to be joining so many brilliant speakers, so many sisters that are absolutely incredible socialists. And, you know, to speak alongside them is, is an absolute joy. Um, now, as Ruth said, one of my key interests is about decentralizing the power in the party. Um, so some of you may remember that in 2018, we had the Democracy Review, which looked at ways in which the Labour Party could become more democratic and also more accountable to its members. And some of the amazing reforms that were born from that process was a standalone women's conference with the power to pass policy motions, the Labour Women's Organisation, which, if you didn't know, now officially every woman member in the Labour Party belongs to, uh, women's branches, which will have a greater democratic role than some of the existing women's forums, and also this new National Women's Committee, which is a body tasked with leading the political work of women members and strengthening the voice and presence of women in the Labour Party. So I'm so proud to be standing with socialist sisters, Akua, Mandy, Trisha, Pamela and Solma, and asking for your support to be the CLP representatives on this new National Women's Committee, because I know that this is a chance for us as women members to have a collective say in what policies and campaigns we really want from the Labour Party. You know, in 2019, I was absolutely delighted to attend the Women's Conference in Telford, where so many sisters came together to talk about the changes, the socialist changes that they wanted to see. And at the end of all that debating, which was not without contention because it was a proper policy making conference, not just a discussion forum, though of course, all in sisterly comradeship. At the end of all that debating, we had two brilliant motions on the rights of migrant women and universal credit, which went forward to annual conference and then informed the policies that I was so proud to stand on in 2019 in the 2019 manifesto. And that's exactly the kind of thing that so many of us are in politics for, to fight for the things that we believe in, so we can campaign on a platform that we are proud of and committed to in order to build a far better world for all of us. Now, in June this year, our conference will be online, and I'm a little bit sad we won't be able to come together in person. But I know that sisters will make the debate just as passionate, just as productive, just as purposeful as 2019. And so I'm urging all of you to select socialist delegates, to nominate the socialist candidates for National Women's Committee and to submit motions by the 26th of May so that we can really make it a worthwhile event. There are so many issues affecting women and girls today that need to change, that need socialist solutions from the climate change that affects so many women internationally, but especially in the global south, to the gendered impact of COVID-19, to the way that social care operates and often puts an extra burden on women and so much more. I mean, right now, the party has been talking about the strategy to end violence against women and girls, but it's been a bit of a top-down policy-making process. What we need in the future is to be able to build our policies from the ground up. And I'll say to you, whatever it is that you want to fight for to make the world a better place for women, 
make sure you take the opportunity to have your say in how the Labour Party campaigns on those issues. But of course, democracy in the party is not just about the big national conferences. It's also about women members having a democratic voice in their local areas, which is why the opportunity for women members to form local women's branches is so brilliant. You know, power is best when it is held collectively. And women's branches will really give sisters the opportunity to make their voices heard in CLPs, to bring their local campaigns into the party, and to send out party members to support those campaigns in turn. And with the same powers and rights as any branch in their CLP, the branches will have an important role to play in the decision-making of their CLP. And that's why a key task of the new National Women's Committee will be to support the establishment of women's branches in CLPs across the country. And although our responsibilities would be towards women's branches, we will be backing all equalities branches. We know many women face multiple kinds of discrimination and we want to support sisters in taking that on together. And finally, we believe in democracy. So although it's in the description that the National Women's Committee should lead the political work of women in the party, really, it's the grassroots membership who should be leading us. And that's why we're holding events in the run-up to Women's Conference for women members to come and talk to us about what they want for women in the party. And it'd be great for some of you to join us. So I want to say again, thank you so much for your time. And I really hope that together we can create a Labour Party national women's organisation that is truly feminist, socialist and democratic. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Chloe. Uh, that was fantastic. And I think some really clear messages are coming out across our candidates and uh, indeed our other speakers this evening. Uh, we've had a message from one of the um, participants this evening saying she wants from Vicky, who says she wants to congratulate and celebrate our six sisters. This is not an easy time to stand up and shout out in the Labour Party, but your collective solidarity and willingness to challenge our party demonstrates your socialist and feminist commitment. So it's great to have those comments. We won't be able to read every all of them out, but it is lovely to have them. And it is great to know we've got literally hundreds of people who've joined us on the Zoom tonight and hundreds more watching across the streams platforms. And obviously they will then be there for other people who aren't able to be with us this evening to watch later. And we're very conscious a number of people this evening have mentioned family commitments, caring responsibilities, the double shift that so many women do. Um, so it's brilliant that we're able to use technology to get that message out to people who can't be with us now. Um, we've also had a number of comments by people concerned about the situation in Palestine. And I know that all of the candidates standing and indeed all of our speakers uh, will be supporting and standing in solidarity with the Palestinian people. Um, our next candidate who's speaking is Trisha Duncan. Uh, Trisha's held a wide range of Labour Party and trade union positions, and she's currently vice chair of the Scottish Labour Women's Committee and vice chair of the Scottish Policy Forum. Um, so it's great to have her with us and over to you, Trisha. Sorry about that, was muted. A warm welcome to you all from me this evening, Trisha Duncan, and proud to be introducing myself along with my sister socialist candidates and consider why we need strong women's organisation. I'm a working class socialist from Perth in Scotland, which is quite unusual, I'd have to say, and I was brought up with strong commitment to the Labour Party led by my mother and the women in our family. I can count more than 40 years as a party activist and trade unionist at both local and national level, and I'm currently Chair of Perth and Canross CLP and Vice Chair of both Scottish Policy Forum and Scottish Labour Women's Committee. I must say it's such an honour to be on this platform with so many amazing socialist sisters. Thanks to all involved in the journey so far and to all those sisters working behind the scenes to create a strong women's organisation. With that in mind, the United Nations theme this year is Women in Leadership, Achieving an Equal Future in a COVID-19 World and it celebrates the tremendous effort by women and girls around the world. 
But I say there is still so much to be done as women of the world want and deserve an equal future, free from stigma, stereotypes and violence, a future that's sustainable and peaceful with equal rights and opportunities for all. To reach this goal, we need a world with women at every table and where decisions are being made. So we must honor our socialist roots, work in solidarity with our sisters who have the least political voice and continue the struggle. So I say to all, show your support and solidarity, show your in by always choosing to challenge and call out all inequality. My roles of chair, negotiator, teacher, and mother of three give me a wide range of skills, allowing me to be an effective representative of labor women and strongly support socialist policies, striving for a fair and equal society. The passion for making a difference and fighting for change is part and parcel of who I am. At a national level, as Vice Convener of General Teaching Council, Scotland, Vice President of the EIS, and through the Equality Committee, I worked in ensuring women's place, voice, and what's important to them was firmly on the agenda. However, in recent times, I've noted, if we as women are not organized or take our eyes off our goal of equal shares and representation, the place of women will only too easily be ignored and previous work on women's behalf will soon be forgotten. For me, women's organisation is of ultimate importance. I was honoured to become Vice Chair of Scottish Labour Women's Committee, and I'm proud of our achievements, particularly of our successful women's conferences. The first was in Glasgow with Dawn Butler, who led the way in talking us all as phenomenal women. That was inspirational. The second and major one-day policymaking women's conference led to our women's motions being moved successfully at conferences. This is an important way of ensuring the areas of policy important to women are heard and acted on. Our Scottish Women's Committee have also worked hard to support our women's officers at a regional level. There have been a number of meetings set up to support the work of women's officers and members while creating networks and links for them. Strong organisation, as I said, is top priority. And there have been monthly theme meetings set up for all our Labour women. The latest Women's Manifesto consultation meeting led to us working on the themes raised for inclusion in Scottish Labour's Manifesto, a very good piece of work. A much deserved thanks go to Scottish Women's Committee for their dedication to working for the cause of women. There is much to be proud of, and I would like to give a big shout out at this stage to our new socialist sister MSPs, Katie Clark, Carol Mockin, and Mercedes Villalba. Many congratulations to them, and we look forward to to them making a difference for women. So the new National Women's Committee is to be formed after the election at National Women's Conference. We Socialist Sisters welcome the return of a policy-making women's conference and its role in electing a Labour Women's Committee after a two-decade absence. It's such a long time. The committee will have a key role, empowering a democratic and campaigning women's organisation at local, regional and national levels supporting women's officers and women's branches to be vibrant and indispensable parts of our local organisation. I look forward to being a representative and I will use my experience, knowledge and skill from the operation of Scottish Labour Women's Committee while working with my sisters to ensure we create a strong women's committee. History shows that electing a Labour government needs a women's votes. Together we will work for a strong Labour women's organisation campaigning to realise our aspirations and sending the vital message that the Labour Party is there for women. It will be crucial to continue to champion women's priorities and encourage women's participation in our movement and ensure working with the trade union representatives and others on the committee to set a socialist agenda for all that we do. Our motto is, the cause of women is the cause of labour. The Kua Bianu, Mandy Clare, Tricia Duncan, Pamela Fitzpatrick, Chloe Hopkins, Salma Ahmed. We look forward to your support and solidarity, and thanks to all of you. Thank you very much indeed, Tricia. That was fantastic. Uh, and it's really important that the new committee reflects uh, CLP delegates uh, uh, and uh, people who are elected by CLPs from across the nations as well as the regions. Um, so that we make sure that that whole breadth of experience is there. Um, our final candidate speaker for this evening is Solma Ahmed. Uh, Solma will be well known to many people and is a strong anti-racist campaigner from the east of England and has done a lot of community-based work to support women's rights. So we're delighted to have you with us, Solma. 
Anda, over to you. Sorry, I was just unmuting, <laughs> unmuting. Um, thank you, thank you for inviting me and it's great to be here with other fantastic socialist feminists tonight. Um, my background is housing. I've worked in housing all my life and through the work of housing, my political journey actually began. I became a socialist and a sucker for women's rights. You see, I worked primarily with migrant women and refugee women. This is where I saw the real suffering of women, whether it's poverty, lack of education, or violence and abuse against women. This is where I decided that everything that I and my organization does will prioritize women, starting with our allocation policy to finding plumbers, electricians, women's architect team. I have been so proud to have pioneered many things, including establishing two women's refuge. One of my current projects I'm working on at this moment is started when I moved back to Colchester about five years ago after working in London. A small Bangladeshi women's group was established and has been going on informally for about 10 years. They were struggling to find their voice to take their project forward. Of course, given my experience and enthusiasm of anything to help support and empower women, I was asked to help out. So first thing I did was to register the organization as a community interest company. Secondly, I started to take some of the women with me to events and meetings so that they could speak for themselves about their problems and find their voice in the community. I love empowering women. They asked me to help with their campaigning for all women's swimming session at the local leisure pool. To cut a long story short, it took 18 months to negotiate with the council, including organizing a protest to get one fortnight session for an hour. You see, this is why we must find a way to kill the bill. Promote peaceful protest is is the way that you get noticed. And establishment don't like that. They want to silence the majority, but I disagree. Let's leave that for another discussion. COVID-19 has hit us beyond any comprehension. We know how COVID has affected the working class women. An opportunity to help in the space suddenly appeared about six months ago. The NHS wanted to support BME organization. I went to that first meeting with the NHS and said, this funding is for the BME communities. I want this funding to go directly to BME led organization, not through some other mainstream organization. I said, I'm not interested in crumbs of the table anymore. You see, I have been, I have seen how neoliberal attitude says funding can't be given to BME communities directly to help themselves. I'm happy to tell you today, Bangladeshi Women's Association has received significant amount of funding direct to the organization to deliver health projects. We start the project from next month. I have learned to stand my ground and demand more. This is what I will bring to the Women's Committee. I have been watching the Women's Committee's work and feel strongly we need to have a bold vision that takes us to the next level, where we won't be sitting here in 10 years time talking about misogyny, patriarchy, and unequal distribution of wealth and power. Women are often dominated in patriarchal and misogynist society. I'm a Muslim woman, yes, a hijabi woman, but I'm not oppressed. I'm a socialist and a feminist. My hijab is not a sign of oppression. It's a sign of my liberation. It is my identity. It is what um, I am, a Muslim, a socialist, and a feminist. Being all these things isn't easy. It's a target for constant abuse. 
I wear my heart scarf of my own choice as a proud Muslim woman. It is part of my identity. It is my body and my choice. I can't end without mentioning Palestine, of course. Many of the speakers have mentioned Palestine. Tonight, my heart and my mind is in Palestine. If you want to know what his oppression is all about, look at what is happening to them. This is why I want the Women's Committee to discuss human rights abuses, internationalism as well, such as rights of Palestinian women and Muslim women in China. What action we must take to help the oppressed of the world. I am haunted by the images of Palestine I can't bear watching TV news at the moment. Without the freedom of Palestine, none of us are free. Please support us all six. If we were to make a socialist policies a reality for all women, then all of us six needs to be elected. Thank you very much. Thank you, Soma. Um, fantastic to hear your experiences on the ground, uh, getting support for services for women and helping women to build those services themselves. Uh, really inspiring. And of course, again, um, uh, uh, it's dreadful what's happening at the moment in Palestine and uh, to be reminded of the need for international solidarity and for solidarity here with women who face uh, more than one form of oppression. Uh, it's really important that the committee includes women who have lived experience of that and are committed to fighting it. Um, I'd like to apologise. Um, somebody has made the point in the Q&A uh, that I've been using the term CLP. Um, it isn't at all obvious what that would mean. Um, I think some of us spend too long in meetings uh, and don't always realise that sometimes that language is quite off-putting. Uh, so it stands for Constituency Labour Party, which would just be uh, a better term would be the local Labour Party in your area. Um, and it's really, really good to be reminded that we need to find ways to involve people and not to um, exclude people in the way we describe things. So thank you very much to whoever raised that. Um, We've heard from the last of our candidate speakers. I think, unfortunately, it, as we know, uh, Dawn had explained, Dawn Butler had explained that she was held up in the chamber raising issues in the Queen's speech. And I think it's probably now unlikely that she'll be able to join us in time. However, I am really delighted to introduce Diane Abbott as our final speaker. Um, really, she doesn't need introduction. She's been an inspiration to um, probably all of us. Uh, a former Shadow Home Secretary and a woman who's fought tireless, tirelessly for women and against racism. She's led the way in so many ways and has stood firm in the face of unprecedented abuse. Um, sadly, sometimes from within the party as well as without. But Dawn, you're, uh, Diane, sorry, you're an absolute inspiration to us. We're really delighted to have you with us. Uh, and over to you as our final panellist. Thank you very much, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, that's great. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here at this meeting tonight. And I'm here first and foremost to support the six brilliant women candidates that you've heard from tonight. It's not an easy time to stand up and be counted in the Labour Party, but it couldn't be a more important time. We have to rally and we have to fight for our communities, for our Labour Party and for the country. You may have heard that one of Keir Starmer's new advisors is Peter Mandelson, who some of you may remember. We don't need to be going back to the future with Peter Mandelson. We need to be going forward. And I believe the six candidates we've heard from tonight will help build 
the Labour Party, take the Labour Party forward. I remember that when Keir Starmer was contesting the leadership in 2020, he said, and I'm quoting here, we should treat the 2017 Labour Party manifesto as our foundational document. The radicalism and the hope that that inspired across the country was real. That radicalism and hope was real. And I'm confident that our six candidates will take forward that message of radicalism and hope, a forward-looking message for the future. There have been many issues touched on tonight, but I just wanted to touch on one, Palestine. There were many rallies on justice for the Palestinians all over the weekend. I attended one in London and I was privileged to speak. It was a huge demonstration outside the Israeli embassy, one of the biggest demonstrations I've been on for some time. And one of the really positive things about it wasn't just the numbers, but that there were so many young people who felt brave and who felt strong to come out on the street and express their support for the people of Palestine. And we all see every night the bombardment of Gaza, and we all hear every day the increasing numbers of Palestinians, including far too many women and children who have perished. So in Palestine, we want an end to forced evictions from East Jerusalem. We want the sacred sites like the Alaska Mosque to be treated with the utmost respect. We want an end to all new Israeli settlements. But above all, the British government needs to recognize Palestine. Palestine will be free. So there's so much we need to talk about in terms of where we are after Brexit, in terms of how some of our poorest and most marginalized uh, communities have suffered from coronavirus, in terms of genuinely protecting our NHS, and in terms of building on the advances we saw under the leadership of Jeremy Corbyn. I believe that these great candidates will do that, I am supporting them. I urge all of you to support them. And I look forward to seeing them later in the year victorious. Thank you very much for inviting me to speak. Thank you so much, Diane. That was a fantastic end to what's been uh, an amazing evening. I've, I've been really, um, it's been such an experience to be with so many women who are working so hard, who've got so much experience and who are fighting for other women and for collective improvements in people's lives. I hope um, that everyone watching this has um, enjoyed that as much as I have uh, and has felt inspired to ensure that we go away, um, elect the six candidates to the Women's Committee, but critically uh, pass motions to go to Women's Conference, but then to carry on working uh, across our local areas, within our communities and across the Labour Party for change. Um, I've just got, before we go, I've just got some thank yous uh, to a number of people. So to the organisations that have supported tonight, so Arise, the Campaign for Labour Party Democracy, Labour Party Black Socialists, Labour Representation Committee, Red Labour, Jewish Voice for Labour, Campaign for Socialism from Scotland, Labour Women Leading, Northern England Labour Left, Labour Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament, Welsh Labour Grassroots and Momentum. Uh, to all of our amazing speakers, um, to the team of volunteers who have supported tonight, uh, in particular to Patrick, to Carol, all her work in setting this up, 
to Claire and Selena for our social media content tonight, to Rob, our BSL interpreter, and to everyone attending. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, we look forward, I hope, to meeting many of you at Women's Conference uh, and at future events. There's been a lot in the chat about how you can get involved in all sorts of ways. If you are able to make a donation to the cost of putting on events, that would be very, very welcome. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules. Uh, and we look forward to a really exciting Democratic Women's Conference and the recreation of a Women's Committee. Thank you very much and good night.